What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist, and these are my top five Speyside distilleries. Chances are, the very first single malt whiskey you might have tried, it probably was from Speyside. Yeah, so while I don't want to pigeonhole uh, an entire region into a specific taste and profile, Speyside whiskey is by and large, you know, very drinkable, very palatable, quite fruity, quite floral. And there's a lot of them, right? 50 distilleries in that region. So, you know, just by virtue of being there so many, there are that many more bottles floating around. And so hence, the chances are that your first whiskey was probably a Speyside whiskey. And that's probably a good thing. That means, that means the first whiskey you tried was palatable, it was sweet and it was nice, and it made you curious for more. Speyside is by and large a very, very popular region among whiskey lovers. So whatever list anyone makes, it's going to, it's going to draw some level of contention. Uh, and so, and I'm, I won't be surprised if, uh, if this list does the same. However, bear in mind that this is my list. This is, this is, these are my top five distilleries that I think should be in Speyside. You might have a completely different list and that list is absolutely right for you and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, this one just happens to be mine. So yes, so I just want to put this out there in case I start getting hate or leaving out, leaving out someone's favorite distillery. I will have a few honorable mentions uh, right at the end, but uh, yeah, but without further ado, let's count it down. Bendromac at number five. Wow, um, I didn't see that coming. I don't know if you did, uh, but yes, Ben Romac, uh, very, very tiny, tiny distillery. Uh, and I've been a fan of it for many, many years now. And it was because of the Ben Romac 100 proof. It was an absolutely stunning whiskey, a 10 year old served at 57% and such gorgeous, bold, amazing flavors. Made me fall in love with the distillery and now many years later, I'm glad to say that they've maintained enough consistently above average liquid for me to include it in a top five. I was recently part of a tasting where we had the 10 year old, the 15 year old, the 2009 vintage, um, at cost strength and then the 21 year old and while none of them were blow your mind out of the water they were all extremely extremely tasty very very delicious and at a very very affordable price point uh, now i won't go into the price for every single uh, expression that they have but if you look around chances are that you will find them at a very very affordable price and so i have here with me for example this 21 year old, which is a lovely, lovely dram. As you can see, only this much left. Um, I had the entire range, uh, but I think I polished it off in a tasting. I don't remember, but uh, it used to be with me. It's not anymore. So I'm guessing I drank it, which is a good thing. So yeah, so uh, if you're looking out uh, for uh, a Speyside whiskey to start your uh, whiskey journey with, or you haven't tried them, I highly, highly recommend that you give Ben Romach a chance. You will definitely not be disappointed. In fourth position is Glen Fiddich. Now you're probably wondering, Glen Fiddich, why? Well, I'll tell you why. Glen Fiddich, independently owned, family owned, Still, still putting out eight statements, 12, 15, 18, 21, 25, 30, 40, still doing that. And not only that, they're also, uh, they're also listening to the consumers. They're, they're understanding what the consumer wants, what sort of flavor profiles that they're after. And they're going out and they're experimenting. And they have this whole thing called the experimental series where, you know, they used IPA casks uh, to uh, mature some of their whiskeys. Uh, they had, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a whiskey called Project 20 uh, XX. I have a bottle of that thing right behind me. Uh, and uh, the idea was they invited 20 or 21 different 
brand ambassadors from around the world who went and picked a cask from the uh, from the warehouse and then Brian Kinsman the whiskey maker used all those casks and made a single malt whiskey out of it which I think is a fantastic concept uh, and uh, what else yeah uh, there's, there's been a few missteps in my opinion uh, some expressions which I'm not a huge fan of but you know why I love uh, Glenfiddich and I, I don't think they get the praise that they really deserve is the fact that they've produced consistently above average liquid at such a massive volume right the 12 15 18 21 my god the amount of whiskey that these guys produce and still manage to keep it tasty delicious man that is that is unbelievable uh, management and whiskey making so uh, tip of my hat to them if it wasn't for them putting whiskey in the hands of uh, regular people uh, you know and making whiskey such a profitable enterprise we would not be experiencing other distilleries uh, you know take a ride on their coattails uh, and uh, produce some uh, excellent drams so Glenfiddich is not just responsible for its own whiskies it is responsible for keeping in my opinion this industry alive Before I begin this video, let me tell you something. Your your patronage and your viewing means a lot to me. Uh, so if you're if you're a subscriber uh, who's watching this video, thank you so much uh, for your for your support and your encouragement. It means a lot. Uh, for those of you who aren't subscribed, man, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. I only talk about whiskey. I talk about whiskey in a good way, in an honest way, in a way that will. Uh, that will entice you to drink more whiskey and I think that's a good thing so if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing or, or drop me a comment and like this video it means a lot everything goes a long way in this whole YouTube algorithm which I'm still trying to figure out but yeah if you subscribe that would be just great in third place is Glenlivet I love Glenlivet Glenlivet is the reason I drink whiskey today. It is uh, it is the 15 year old French oak reserve that I first tried and somebody picked up a bottle of that and they said, hey, have you tried single malt whiskeys? And I said, no, I have no idea what it is. And they gave me this 15 year old French oak reserve and when I tried it, and granted it was with a drop of water, maybe a little more than a drop of water. And I remember drinking it and thinking, wow, in my life, I never thought I would be drinking whiskey like that. Or I would be ever drinking whiskey at all. And and I fell in love and it tasted so wonderful. It was so fruity. It was so it was so heathery. It was so it was so floral. Um, and I fell in love with it and uh, that that really started my quest. So uh, one of the reasons they're on this list is because of pure nostalgia uh, and my emotional connection to them. But Having said that, like Glenfiddich, also producing eight statements, you know, the 12, the 15, the 18, the 21 archive, the 25 year old. Oh, what an absolute sherry monster that is. One of my absolute favorites. Um, they're starting to put out some, some, you know, crap stuff like the, like the distiller's reserve. I don't know. I don't even know what those two words mean together. Distiller's reserve. Uh, absolutely useless whiskey that. Um, you know what? I think they might have discontinued the 12. I'm not 100% sure. If you know, please let me know. Um, I guess I'll be disappointed. Um, what else? They've uh, they started putting out the Nadura series, which, uh, in my opinion, not so good. However, the Nadura to look out for is the 16-year-old cast strength. Go for the age statement. That's the whiskey to have. Why on the list uh, still? Well, it's because, man, they're putting out the age statements. They're putting out the age statements. They're non-chill filtered, and I believe they're not colored as well. So kudos to them for sticking to that. And again, like Glenfiddich, producing enormous amounts, enormous amounts of whiskey, putting it in the hands of people who want to try them and keeping the industry alive. So again, another one with the tip of my hat is Glenlivet. So, again, you know, if you're out there looking for something to try for the first time in your life or have to introduce uh, your friend to whiskey, then the Glen Levitt is absolutely phenomenal. Huge, huge competition between second place and first place. However, in second place is Glen Farklas, one of my favorite smaller uh, distilleries, again, family owned, uh, owned by the Grants. And 
dude, absolutely stunning whiskeys, uh, in my opinion. Uh, keeping it real in terms of the pricing, my word, the Glen uh, Far Class 10, the 15, the 21, the 25, all at absolutely stunning prices. The Glen Far Class 15, I think, sells for less than 50 pounds. Where else are you going to get? a 15 year old whiskey for 50 pounds. So, you know, brilliant pricing, extremely affordable, uh, very easily available, and the quality is absolutely amazing, in my opinion. Um, and I, but I think they edged out everybody else for second spot purely because of the really, really good pricing. And I appreciate the lot, uh, that a lot. Their Glen Far Class 105, which is their cast strength Sherry Bomb, while not as good as the older, uh, earlier releases uh, is still a pretty damn good dram again uh, available at a fairly affordable price uh, so that you get a huge range of whiskies at a very very good price point and that is an amazing thing uh, if you have deep pockets uh, look for their uh, family casks uh, which go back uh, as far as 1950s if I'm not mistaken 1960s I've had the pleasure of tasting 1960 something at the distillery when we did a tasting with them and just gorgeous gorgeous drams uh again but you need deep pockets for that um uh, but uh but if you do have deep pockets yes have a look out for the family cost for those of you who don't and want to try good whiskeys at a decent price then the glen far class is the perfect perfect choice I know some of you are pissed because I've left out your favorite distillery. Uh, I'm going to give some honorable mentions. Uh, I hope uh, one of them is yours. Uh, I won't tell you the reason why I haven't included them because it's too long drawn. Uh, but for example, Abelauer, uh, another amazing distillery, uh, uh, famous for his uh, Abelauer Abuna, the cast strength sherry version. Oh. Very, very nice. Glenn Alahi is doing some very, very good work in recent years. Do check them out. Tamdu, to my surprise, very, very good uh, releases. Again, in recent years, uh, their age statements are holding up well against other uh, similar uh, similar style of whiskeys. Glen Murray is doing some good work. I thought they were a boring distillery, but they're not. Uh, their single cast uh, wine finishes, mm, particularly tasty if you can get your hands on them. I've done a review, I'll, I'll link it up to that. Ben Riach an old time favorite of mine, uh, does some solid, solid whiskeys. And finally, Balvini. Yes, um, the only reason they didn't make the top five is because their recent, you know, travel retail stuff with the triple cask, just, you know, very ordinary in my opinion. But the reason uh, they're at least here for an honorable mention is, is, their, is their legacy with, you know, with the with the 12 year old double wood uh, still available uh, but uh, but you know they're 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 single barrels the 12 and 15 year old single barrels amazing drabs but my favorite the 17 year old sherry cask discontinued uh, then they had the 14 year old caribbean rum cask uh, discontinued uh, the Balvini uh, 30. Ah, what a stunning dram that. So uh, if I'd made this, uh, if I'd made this list uh, seven, eight, ten years ago, then you know Balvini might have been my number one space side whiskey. But I think uh, off late have kind of fallen, fallen down the ranks, um, uh, and so relegated to honorable mentions. And finally, my number one whiskey is Glendronach from Space Side. Um, I fell in love with Glen Dronach when I first had their batch, batch strength whiskies or cast strength whiskies, uh, and they were a mix of PX and Oloroso Sherry uh, casks, and I had the batch one, and it was just absolutely sublime. And then that sort of set me down the road to find more and more uh, Glen Dronachs. And my favorite, as you can see, I have here with me, ooh, they're uh, this, they're up to batch eight now with their cast strength series. Super dram. They're 12 year old, extremely affordable, packs a punch, I absolutely love it. The 21 year old Parliament, not my favorite because I think there's a lot of sulfur in here, but I think that's an old stock. Um, there might be, uh, I think, newer releases of the 21 Parliament which are not tainted with sulfur. This particular one is. Uh, however, what I love about Glen Tronach, and again, you need, you need deep pockets, but, if you can, get your hands 
on these single cost bottles that they're famous for. Uh, matured in uh, PX, Oloroso, sometimes a combination. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, stunning drams. And if you're a cost strength sherry head like myself, then these single cost bottlings are absolutely amazing. They range from um, 10 years old up to 30, 40 year old single casks. Again, if you have deep pockets. So yes, thank you. So this rounds up my top five uh, space side distilleries that I currently uh, like. Uh, I'm sure uh, I've missed out a few that you felt should have been in the top five. Uh, so if you think I've left any out, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. And maybe, who knows, I'll make a second list. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the Malta Activist. Until next time. Peace.